I've done some quick and dirty videos in my day, but this is going to be the quickest and dirtiest video if I've ever done. I have to be at work in two hours, so let's do it. Let's, let's, get, let's get to it. DJI, the Chinese company that has basically monopolized the drone, the consumer level drone market, has put out a new drone as of yet. Well, technically, they announced it yesterday. The drone is going to go up for sale on the 28th. So, uh, I need money right now because I want it. This thing is awesome. It's a cross between the Spark, which I actually I have right here. I, uh, I bought this thing for my trip to Mexico. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Look at this thing. It looks different now because I put uh, these skins on it. It looks kind of cool. Anyway, so I bought this thing, the, the Spark. Uh, this is like their most entry level, the cheapest drone DJI offered. And uh, this new drone, the Mavic Air, is poised to be sent between the Spark and the Mavic, which is still a consumer level drone, but something with a lot more bells and whistles. So the Mavic Air is going to be kind of like the in-between point. So the, the, the highlights of the presentation they had was basically it's going to have four 4K video, uh, three-axis gimbal. The stabilization is going to be three-axis. So basically, with the Spark, I'm not sure if you can see it here. Uh, it stabilizes yaw and it stabilizes, um, I guess this is pitch. Yeah, pitch, yaw, and roll. Right? I forget. I forget what those are actually called, but you know what I'm talking about. It stabilizes the footage if your drone does this and if your drone does this, but it does not stabilize when your drone does this. And the Mavic Air will have three-axis stabilization, meaning the video is going to look a lot smoother. The nacelles, which are basically these little arms here, they fold in, making it so the profile of the drone is a lot smaller and therefore a lot more portable than the Spark. The body of the Spark is still smaller, but it takes up a lot of room because these things don't fold in. The Mavic Air will also have better battery life than the Spark and better object avoidance systems. So yeah, if somebody has the Mavic, this is really a step back. But if you have the Spark, like it's my case, oh my god, this thing is awesome. This is the drone that I really wish the Spark was originally, but this is common in technology, right? Like they put something out that's not as good as it could be and then next year they put out the one that they really were planning to put out. This is very, I'm, a, I'm an Apple user. This is a very common business practice for me. I want one. Speaking of tech, Nintendo put out something that was a little, uh, how, how do I even describe this? Nintendo Labo, in case you haven't seen this, this is a new toy by Nintendo for the Switch. It's some kind of cardboard add-on for 69 bucks, which is some people thought is a little much. You get a game, the software, and all of these cardboard cutouts that you put together, these little pianos, and uh, there's a bike game, and essentially, once you assemble the cardboard creation, you put your switch in there, you put the Joy-Cons in, and it's, it's essentially a toy that leverages the technology in the switch as its brain. So some kind of, it's kind of like, think of a, a cardboard arcade, basically. There's a fishing game, there's, like I said, there's a bike game, there's one that seems pretty interesting. It's it's, it's one that basically the kid, and this is geared primarily for kids, is going to wear on his body like a mech suit, and then on the screen he's a, a giant robot punching people in the face, I'm assuming. Well, in the video he's really punching buildings, but this is going to be a missed opportunity if you can't punch, pe punch people in the face while wearing a mech suit. This is what the, you can't see it here, but the power loader from Aliens, something that I've, yeah, fuck it, I'll show you. You remember Aliens, right? The moment where Ripley puts on uh, the power loader suit to fight the alien queen at the end. That was the moment I knew I loved sci-fi. And I lusted over this thing forever. It took me literally a good chunk of my life to find this thing. So while the Labo is aimed to kids, if I can wear a mech suit, even if it's cardboard, and punch people in the face with it, I'm, I'm game, I'm game. Now. I'm very curious to see if uh, Nintendo's gonna find a lot of mainstream success with this or if it's gonna be like this niche, you know, this game for kids, like kind of like the balance board and all those little, they came out with a lot of things like that in the past and I mean Nintendo was originally a toy manufacturer, so this is kind of like a return to form for them. So I'm very curious uh, how the Labo is gonna, is gonna pan out, if it's gonna be like something like, oh it's gonna, it's, people are gonna love it for like two months and then nobody's gonna care about it anymore or if this is gonna be a complete game changer. I think it's it's more likely the first one than the second, but who knows. A Bitcoin heist! Three Canadian geniuses stormed a Bitcoin office and the news it's it's kind of what, what, what is what is a Bitcoin office anyway? Auto police 
have arrested one suspect and are looking for two others after employees at a Bitcoin financial institution were held at gunpoint Tuesday. The attempted robbery happened from Concourse Gate off Colonnade. Who cares where it happened, okay? This is the point. These guys went to a Bitcoin office, which just, those words sound weird put together to me, but anyway. They gained control of the four employees there, bound their hands, and I'm assuming feet too, because I mean, if you only bind people's hands, they can still run away, right? So I'm assuming they used a lot of duct tape on this. They probably spent more money than they were bound to get because it's Bitcoin. How are you expecting to steal Bitcoin exactly? I suppose if you put a gun to people's face and you say, give me your uh, your wallet, give me your passphrase, or whatever you use to store your Bitcoin, like, give it to me right now. I suppose that could work, but the idea of stealing Bitcoins just sounds weird to me. So one of these criminal masterminds was caught by the police. They're looking for two others. And one of the things they charged him with is wearing a disguise, which I didn't know was a crime in Canada. Bitcoin robbery. It's weird because Bitcoin is kind of turning, are they going old school? Because in the early years of Bitcoin, there was a lot of exchange hacks and a lot of fraud going on, the whole thing with the deep web. And so now the crime that goes around, like the, the, the Bitcoin theft going on now is old timey. It's people holding up the place and asking for somebody to give them their Bitcoin. I mean, this doesn't, maybe I'm just an idiot and I don't understand technology very well. It may very well be the case. But a Bitcoin robbery doesn't sound to me like this would work. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below. How long was this? Eight minutes, I'm doing good. Okay, I gotta edit this and go to work. I'll see you guys next time. You know, if I stole one Bitcoin, I could buy how many Mavic Airs? I'm gonna do the math.